everyone, my name is Dr. Gabrielle David and I am a research physical scientist at the Cold Regions Research and Engineering Lab here in Hanover, New Hampshire. Uh, and so I am a fluvial geomorphologist and many of you probably don't know what that is, but it's a type of geologist. So a geologist is someone who studies the earth and I am someone who studies rivers. So fluvial has to do with water and geomorphology has to do with how the landscape is shaped. So I study how rivers shape the landscape. Uh, and so for the Army Corps, what I do is I help people understand how rivers work on the landscape, how, uh, how what we do around them, how that can impact those streams, how it can affect things like its water quality. Uh, so today, we're going to uh, start an experiment that actually helps us test the water quality in streams. And so this is a tool that many scientists and engineers and uh, regulators will use so that they can understand water quality and see then if certain activities are really impacting uh, these streams around us. So today we're going to do this experiment where we look at macroinvertebrates in the streams. So macroinvertebrates are insects in the streams. Uh, they're insects like black flies uh, or mayflies or dragonflies. All of those types of insects actually spend a good portion of their life cycle living in the streams. And so they're called macroinvertebrates because they're large enough that you can see them. And so they're the insects that you can actually pick up rocks and see on the bed of the stream. They tend to be very good for determining water quality because they live most of their lives in the streams and they don't move around a whole lot. Not like fish, you know, fish like move up and downstream and they go to different places. And, and so it's hard to tell uh, from fish how good or bad the water quality is. But the macroinvertebrates, they spend most of their lives there in these sections. Sometimes floods might, might move them downstream, but they're basically in these little sections of channel. And, uh, and so they can really tell us, depending on what types of insects we see, uh, what kind of water quality we have. Because there are some that are not very tolerant to pollution, and there are some that are really tolerant. So if you only have the insects uh, in your stream that are very tolerant, that might mean that you have some poor water quality. But if you see insects that are, uh, very to are not tolerant of pollution, then that might mean that actually your water quality is very good in that stream. And so that's how we start to test and see uh, and, and be able to get a sense of how good the water quality is. Today we're going to get started with a leaf pack study. So what we do is we're going to fill these bags here. So each of you, you should have three of these bags and you're going to fill them with leaves and then we're going to use some string that you'll probably need to get from home uh, and tie them around some rocks and put them in the stream. And what you do is you leave these leaves in the stream for a few weeks because then the macroinvertebrates will start to make their home on the leaves. The leaves, uh, they start to break down from bacteria and algae and some macroinvertebrates actually scrape and eat that material. Some of them like caddisfly, they make their home on the leaves and then they'll just sit there and they wait for things to float downstream that they eat. Uh, and then there are some macroinvertebrates that are predators and so they eat the other macroinvertebrates. And we're hoping by putting these uh, leaf packs in the stream that then you'll get that whole variety so that you can really see the diversity of macroinvertebrates in your stream channel. And again, and then we can test and, and look at that and determine what kind of water quality that you have. So you have all three of these. We're going to collect leaves that are local around your stream. So the first thing you have to do for this project is actually find a stream that you think will have water in it for the next few weeks. And we are in this area in a drought, so some channels may be pretty low. Uh, but look for a stream that you, you think has a good flow in it now and that uh, you hope will keep some water in it. And then you're going to find an area um, around the stream to start collecting leaves. And so that's what we're going to do is start uh, collecting leaves. Now, as part of your leaf pack packet, you probably have these labels. And so we're going to put then, we'll put these in to the leaf packs. Uh, the labels we sent are on waterproof paper, but to help protect them further, you might want to put some packing tape over them so that they're even more waterproof. Uh, 
And you're gonna need, so you'll need your string, a pair of scissors to cut it, a pen and pencil, and then just some paper to be able to draw where you put your leaf pack in the channel. So here we'll get started first by going and collecting our leaves. Now we're gonna just pick up some leaves. So you just wanna find a spot where you have a bunch of leaves on the ground you can pick up. Look out for poison ivy, make sure that you stay away from that. Uh, and we'll put a few handfuls in each bag. And so try to put the same number in each bag. So let's see, uh, we'll put, put about four or five handfuls here. So that was one, two, Three, four, and five. Now that we have our leaf packs, we are going to write our labels to put in our leaf packs. So you're going to write the date and you have three bags so you're going to label each bag one two three and you're going to write your location uh, so make sure you know the name of your stream and then you can write that down and and you'll write the experimental condition so you're going to put each of these leaf packs in a different part of the stream and so i you're going to put one leaf pack in a riffle so that would be your uh, your control, we're gonna call that. So you can say riffle and control. And then one leaf pack will be in a pool. And then the other one will be uh, in, next to the bank somewhere. So I'll show you in a minute those different sections of the stream. But you wanna write down riffle, pool, and bank uh, with your bags one, two, three. Once you have your three labels, then put one label in a bag uh, like I mentioned earlier, if you put some packing tape over it, it can help protect it even more from the water, so you'll be able to read your label. And so we'll just put our labels so that we can see them on the outside of the bag, like this, so this way I remember that this is the bag I want to put in the riffle. Alright, and then we should tie shut our bags so that our, uh, <laughs> our, our leaves don't escape. There we go. So next we actually need our string to tie through the bags and then tie around some, uh, some rocks. So we want to tie these bags around rocks and hope that they don't move downstream uh, when we, and we can find them in the same place we place them after three weeks. So with the string, you want to make sure that you go and tie some through the bag so that it, it also doesn't come off. So. Make sure you go in between the little uh, weaving here. Make sure that's nice and tight. And when you tie around a rock, you can also tie it like you're in two ways like you're doing a little gift wrapping <laughs> My, okay and you probably have some extra string here I cut up sometimes if a, if a big storm comes through when you put these leaf packs in, you might get a flood in your stream and the leaf packs might move downstream. So remember when you come back to look for them in a few weeks, uh, that if you don't see them where you left them, then look downstream because they're probably caught on something and you can probably find them down there. But we'll hope that this one stays attached to this nice rock and we can find it in our channel. Right, so this stream has some classic pools and riffles. So a riffle is just an area that has very fast moving water. It's a little shallower. 
Uh, and so you and you tend to see, see on the surface, the water surface, these little ripples on the top. And it's but it is riffle. It's R I F F L E. Uh, and so then a pool is a deep section of channel. Uh, and and so um, you see that behind me. And what you'll find is that macroinvertebrates. There's different kinds that will live in pools and live in riffles. Because the riffles are fast moving, there might be more food actually that's moving through those sections of channels. And so we'll see if maybe we get uh, more diversity in macroinvertebrates in these riffles. And in the pool, it's, it, the water tends to stay in there a little bit longer. It's slow moving. Uh, and so we might get a different variety there. And we're also just checking in this channel to see if uh, along the banks where you have more cover, more uh, organic material might be falling down from the banks and maybe we'll get a little bit different macroinvertebrates living right next to the banks rather than um, in the middle of our riffle. So that's why we put our leaf packs in different sections of channel. Um, and from from our knowledge of streams, we know that we're expecting to get more macros in our riffle, but we'll see what happens if we actually get some more in the pool and the banks, and, and then we can see what kind of diversity that we have in the stream. Okay. All right, so we're just gonna find a spot that we can get our leaf pack in a riffle here. It's okay if some of it is above the water surface. We'll try to get it in a deep a spot as we can and make sure if there's some other rocks around that you can put on top of it to help it keep it in place that's good too and just try to keep it secure there there we go so now we're going to put our leaf pack that says pool in this pool. Here's a nice uh, deep one here. And I'll try to put it in the deep section. So make sure you're wearing some waterproof shoes to go in the pool. All right, so we'll put it down here. And let's see. Let me take one of these. Seeing if I can find another rock to put on top of it too. Mm, that's too heavy. All right. There we go. All right, and then our third one, we're gonna put near a bank somewhere. So this is a nice bank. It actually it's making a little pool by it and so we just want to see if we get a different variety of macroinvertebrates over here by this bank. And here got a nice big rock to put on top of that one. So once you have your leaf packs in the channel make sure that you brought a little piece of paper with you to the stream so that you can draw uh, of the little section of stream that you put the leaf packs in and note where you put the leaf packs and that'll help you remember in a few weeks when you come back uh, where they are. Uh, and you also can take some pictures too so if photographs re will really help uh, you remember because sometimes when you come back the leaf packs aren't as obvious anymore because they've been in the channel for a while. So make sure that you uh, take some notes and take some pictures and so that you can find them again. So now that we have our leaf packs in the stream, we can leave them alone for three weeks and what we're waiting for is for the leaves to start to break down. So again, bacteria and algae will come in and start to break down those leaves and that releases some of the nutrients so that other organisms come in and they will eat, the, that, uh, eat up um, 
some of the algae and bacteria and other particulates that's in uh, the stream. And so we'll wait and, and hopefully these macroinvertebrates will start to make their home there. And when we come back, you're gonna come back with buckets and little magnifying glasses and uh, you're gonna put those leaf packs into the buckets and start to sort them and, and see what kind of organisms made their home in your leaf packs. everyone so now it's been three weeks and so now we get to take the leaf packs out of the water and see what kind of little macro invertebrates little aquatic insects that actually made their homes in our leaf packs so this is very exciting we get to see if the leaf packs uh, stayed in the water uh, where we placed them uh, and we'll take them out individually and uh, and identify the macro invertebrates that we find in each leaf pack and uh, and so I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, now remember that recently we got a lot of uh, big rainstorms so make sure that you're always looking at the stream and seeing if it's still safe to walk in. If the water's gotten really high then don't get your leaf packs now you'll have to get it at another time. Uh, but you can see um, this stream is still very, it's, it's higher, but it's still very low and safe to walk in. All right, so here we're gonna go look for our leaf pack one in our riffle. Uh, as you can see, they change color quite a bit. They look a lot like rocks. So it's very important to write down where you put your leaf pack so you can find it again. Uh, so here we got this one out of the water. We're gonna put it in our bucket uh, so that we can see what's, uh, what's made its home in here. We're gonna put our leaf pack here into the bucket. Uh, we're gonna put our, uh, but we're gonna put some water in the bucket first so that we can, they'll help us clean off the leaves and keep our macros happy while they're, while we're investigating them. So just put a little bit of water in there. And then we can dump the leaf pack in the bucket. All right, and here we have our card still that shows us that this is leaf pack one. So now we need to clean off the leaves and uh, look for macroinvertebrates. All right, so you should get comfortable because it's gonna take a little bit of time to, to clean up the leaf packs and look for those macroinvertebrates. Uh, and so here we can just start by looking through actually the leaves, seeing if there's um, there's anything on them. And, uh, and so you can start taking those leaves out actually once you're sure that you don't have any, any macros left on them. So uh, the macroinvertebrates we're looking for, they will, would hopefully have been eating our little decomposed leaves here. Um, it's actually often the bacteria and the fungi that grow on the leaves is what the macroinvertebrates will come and eat. Um, so, so that's where we're just trying to rinse them all off so that we can hopefully have the, they'll hopefully all be in our bucket here. It can be helpful to have a second bucket, especially when the water turns this dark, um, to help you look for the macros. But um, another thing you can, you can use, bring a little strainer from your home and use that to help uh, sift through the water and look, look for, for them in here. All right, looks like there's a, a little caddis fly on our leaf here. So I'm going to just put him directly in one of our little dishes. So you should have some, some Petri dishes. Uh, I'll put some water in there for him. And what we'll do, see this, we know this guy is a caddis fly because he's got a case. And so they like to make, make cases out of wood or stone or, uh, or even pieces of leaf. Put a little leaf in there for him because he was looking for something to attach to. Uh, and, and yeah, he's just hanging out in his case. Uh, so only the top part of him is coming out, but that's what you, the, the caddis flies are one of the ones that can be very easy to identify because they're always in their cases. All right, and if you're not sure what you found, you can look through these cards to help you identify. And, uh, 
And so, you know, I already know uh, from my past experience that this is a caddisfly. So this is what they look like without their little uh, shell and their little cocoon. And here's what one of them looks like here. Um, there's all the information too on the back of the card. This example shows uh, a, a caddisfly making a case with pebbles, but remember that pretty much they make cases out of anything they have available to them. Uh, like I said, wood or leaf parts or uh, whatever, whatever they find. So if you find something in, that's in a case like that, um, then it's a caddisfly. So what I'll do is I'll put this little card by our caddisfly petri dish so that then we remember that that's what we want to put whenever we find another one of them. We'll put them in this little dish so that we can start counting them. There's a few more things that are exciting about caddisflies. Uh, so it's actually that they, um, they live most of their lives in the water. So there's an egg stage, a larva stage, a pupa stage, and then when they're adults, they emerge from the water and they live for about a, a month as adults outside of the water. But most of the year, they actually live in the water. And so they, and they produce, uh, once they're a larva, they produce a silk that helps them build those cases. So they build the cases again out of any of the materials in the environment. And, uh, and they're very pollution sensitive. So they're used worldwide uh, as an indicator to figure out if uh, a stream has good water quality or not. So usually it can be a very good sign to find caddisflies uh, because they are very sensitive to pollution. Uh, and so that means, you know, maybe we don't have too much pollution in this stream uh, since we found one. But we'll see, we're going to see what variety we find. Uh, if we find more caddisflies, that's great. And if we find more, we'll put them all in the same petri dish so that we can uh, count up how many we found. <laughs> so I found a really tiny guy on one of the leaves here. Uh, and so I've got him into a petri dish so that I could take a closer look at him. Uh, and you have your magnifying glass or hopefully some sort of magnifying glass so that you can kind of try to see him a little closer up. Uh, now, now, if you're not sure what he is exactly, then it's useful to think about what body parts you see here. Uh, here's a little picture of this is the anatomy that you might um, that you can think about, and so usually on this kind of guy, you see an antenna, a head, and the middle is the thorax, the bottom is the ad abdomen, and then there's the cerci at the bottom. And often we're looking to see if there's two or three uh, of these little cerci pieces sticking out of the bottom. And, uh, and so that tells us the difference between whether it's a mayfly or a stonefly. So found a really big guy on the leaf here. Uh, he blended right in, but uh, so he took me by surprise a little bit. Looks like he has two tails. So I suspect that he's a stonefly. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna double check because uh, I also see there's actually another little bump in the middle, which could make him uh, a damselfly actually. So I might I might have to look at that a little more closely. Maybe look at some some pictures to see which one I think he likely is. But yeah, he's a nice nice big size.
And now that we sorted through the bucket, we can go and start to tally how many of each, uh, each kind of macroinvertebrate we have. Uh, so, uh, and a lot of the really small ones just ended up sometimes in the same petri dish and that's fine. It's kind of hard to get them all separated out, especially when they're really tiny. And you probably won't find all the really tiny ones. Uh, there are ways that scientists do this where they actually would take the whole leaf pack back to the lab, they'd measure it, um, to see how much, so they measure it before uh, and they weigh weigh the leaves before they put them in the stream and then weigh after to see how much mass it has increased and then they actually will um, will kill all the macroinvertebrates so that they can actually count them that way. We're trying to do a little more uh, friendly version here where we will put them back in the stream when we're done so they can continue living out their lives uh, in the stream. And uh, in this method, we won't, we won't get necessarily everything, but we get a good sampling. And, uh, and these kind of fast methods are often used to, to measure stream health. The, so you can use a leaf pack and kind of measure it this way next to the stream. Sometimes uh, there are methods where you just take a net and kick up the sediment and then see what you get um, in your net. So there's uh, these rapid methods you can use next to the channel um, to just get a good idea of what kind of uh, water quality you have. Uh, so now I'm just going to go through and see if I can tally up and and I'll start to um, write the, uh, put a mark every time I identify one, and then I can put the total number on my data sheet that you have, that you got in your packet. All right, so we'll start with the easiest ones, which are these really big guys uh, that are stoneflies. And, uh, and so here's our little stonefly card. So they have two tails. They have these very distinct uh, part of their abdomen. Uh, and you can see their two antennae too. Uh, and so we'll just go ahead and tally those two. Oops. And so we have one, two. Ooh. There's a couple of smaller guys in here, so I'm going to see if I can see them before, before putting these guys back. Oh, nope, there's one small, really small guy in here. Oh. Yeah, that looks like the other one, so we'll count that as another stonefly. All right, and we're done with that. Now that we counted these guys, uh, we're going to put them back in the bucket, and then we'll. And you know, there's a little bit of water here in the bucket, so again, make sure there's some water, uh, and then we'll just put them back in the stream when we're done. So, I'll just go ahead and put these here. There we go. I'm going to count the caddisflies next since those are really easy to see with their cases. All right. So we have one that's crawling around here, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six uh, cases in here. And so, and all of them appeared to have a, a actual caddisfly in there. And so, We'll go ahead and count those. We just finished going through our first bucket. So now we'll just, uh, we'll put those uh, back in the stream, put them, you know, downstream from your other leaf packs so they don't end up in your, in your other leaf packs. Uh, and then we'll go through the same process um, with the next two leaf packs and see what else we can find. So we'll just clean out everything, make sure that we don't, we don't have any macroinvertebrates left from the uh, first leaf pack and just put them back in the water. 
So now we're gonna put our macro vertebrates back in the water. There we go. Clean that out. Make sure you get all of them. Now that we have them back in the water, we can go put what we found on our data sheets. There's a lot of different ways that our streams get impacted and have uh, pollution in them. Sometimes it's just from sediment in the channel, so from construction, you can get an excess of sediment and that can affect the, the health of the stream and the kinds of the organisms that can live in the stream. Uh, sometimes it's from a much more direct impact from something like uh, pesticides or herbicides. Uh, anything like that that drains from uh, from farms or from uh, from houses or from commercial properties, so uh, businesses, and that can drain into the channel. Uh, you can also have pollution from just water temperatures rising. So, uh, so heat can change what kind of organisms can actually live in the stream. And, uh, and so here we're in a nice wooded area, which actually helps keep the water cooler. Uh, but we've seen uh, with climate change that you can get much warmer waters and that actually can be an impact. Uh, you can also get warmer waters from, uh, from power plants um, that input wor warmer waters into the stream, from dams can change the temperature of water. Uh, so there's all sorts of things that can create uh, create various levels of pollution in the channel and then change what kind of organisms can live in the channel. And these organisms are really important for actually helping to keep the water clean. And, and so when we see them, we know whether or not the water could be safe for us to, to drink. Uh, and, uh, and so they're also a very important part of the ecosystem because fish eat them. Uh, and you know, then we we eat the fish. Uh, birds eat the insects, or birds eat the fish. So they're all part of this, uh, all all connected into the ecosystem. And so you should always know what kind of water you have nearby. And so you should go out and explore and find out whether or not the your local waters have been impacted by different types of pollution and there are ways to help improve the water quality. So it's a great idea to go out and explore and find out uh, what's going on around you.